All right, folks, good morning. I've got a new public disclosure request that was sent in to me yesterday, and boy, it is gonna be good. Now, what I'd like you to do is recall the spat between Kittitas County and Washdot. If you go back to episode 42, you'll see where it broke wide open as uh, uh, Kittitas County offered to help plow snow uh, with Washdot after that huge storm, and Washdot said no, you uh you're not using vaccinated staff so they declined their help and so what that did was set off a firestorm we covered it in episode 48 uh, i'm sorry 44 episode 45 and then also we uh, highlighted some radio interviews with kittitas county and senator curtis king who were really lit up and then that actually spawned quite a bit of material that i could use to put together this video here the question wash dot can't afford to answer that's a good one um, there's another radio interview here with Kittitas County and so forth and so on to where we're now looking at uh, Roger Millar gaslighting the people that he fired saying it's your fault and, and all that. So anyway, this video is going to cover the contractor and the contract that they signed to plow snow. So what I want to do is go back to this video right here and show you a little clip from it. So if you look at episode 42, you'll see this little blip right here where WashDOT said right here, due to significant snowfall, Kittitas County Department of Public Works offered assistance to clear state roadways. Washington State informed Kittitas County they could not accept this assistance due to Kittitas County not mandating the COVID-19 vaccination for county employees. Now, Let's keep in mind the semantics and the image that is communicated by this. What it's saying is that Kittitas County did not mandate the COVID-19 vax. That means they didn't get their employees vaccinated. And because of that reason, WashDOT refused their help. So let us continue. So let's skip forward here to this episode. The question WashDOT cannot afford to answer and see what Roger Millar told the legislature in regards to this issue with Kittitas County and the contractor, BKC Contracting, that WashDOT hired to plow snow instead of bringing on Kittitas County. So that episode covers an article, in part, there's a lot in that video, but there's an article it covers titled, WashDOT Accuses Kittitas County of Misinformation on Snow Removal Dispute. So, there had been a lot of back and forth between the county and Washdot, a lot of bad feelings, and Roger Millar goes to the legislature, and he's basically saying that Kittitas County was lying about the way they represented this issue in terms of them hiring BKC uh, contracting. And you know what? Here's the thing I want uh, to tease out here. So Roger Millar says to the legislature, that Kittitas County said, why are you hiring a contractor to do that work? We could do it. So Kittitas County said, why are you hiring a contractor? We can do it. What does Millar say? He says, we hired a contractor to do that work because they were able to declare that their employees were vaccinated. Here we go again, another Jedi mind trick from Roger Millar to the legislator saying, look, their employees were vaccinated. That's why we hired them. So this whole game that WashDOT is playing is simply to promote the narrative that nothing is acceptable except getting vaccinated. And the way they're going to remain consistent with their own policy of firing people for not being vaccinated is they're, of course, not going to hire any contractors that use unvaccinated staff. That's the impression he wants to communicate. That's the purposeful semantics that he's using. And it's nothing but a mind trick because what we've got now is a the actual documentation that this contractor signed that WashDOT approved to get them out there and start plowing snow. So let's see a little bit of what the truth actually is. So what we have here is a copy of the certification form that the contractor signed to let WashDOT know that it was on board and in conformance with Proclamation 2114. Now, I will not read every word of this, but basically let's see what it says and what it doesn't say. 
So the contractor certifies that he has a COVID-19 vaccination verification plan that complies with the vaccination proclamation. So as we have covered ad nauseum, you have two options as a contractor. You either have vaccinated employees or you give them an accommodation. All right, so here we go. The contractors developed a, a vaccination verification plan, not only for its staff, but also for its subcontractors. And it's obtained a copy or visually observed proof of full vaccination for contractor personnel and subcontractors. But check this out. Okay, complies with the requirements for granting disability and religious accommodations for contractor personnel, including subcontractors. Oh, 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 now hang on a second. There's two options here, one of which means you can give your staff an accommodation so they don't have to get vaccinated. Let's see what this says a little bit more. Okay, so you have operational procedures in place to make sure that your contact and risk of exposure is minimized. And, uh, oh, here again, um, that per and then basically activities that are performed by a contractor personnel and subcontractors will be performed by personnel who are fully vaccinated or properly exempted as required by the above proclamation. Hang on a second, Roger Millar, you told the legislature that they were all vaccinated. Um, when you knew the whole time that there were two options here, either vaxxed or accommodated. You didn't accommodate your own employees, you fired them, and you don't want people to actually be aware of that fact. But uh, yeah, you have, a, you have a contractor here who has the options you wouldn't even give your own personnel. All right. So basically, they're telling them here at the end, if you don't have a contract, uh, COVID-19 contractor vaccination verif verification plan, you're not going to be considered. So BKC Contracting signed this, and they were good to go. Now, what I'd like to tie into here as well is that uh, WashDOT has the option to be able to follow through with this and actually call BS on them if they don't think that they're actually doing what they should do. And to show that this is the case, right here, number seven, we'll provide the agency, that's WashDOT, upon request, contractors COVID-19 vaccination verification plan and related records, et cetera. So WashDOT has the option to actually look and see how many of these employees were granted accommodations and how many were vaccinated. Now, this public disclosure request did not submit or give to me any of these documents. So there's nothing that suggests that WashDOT followed through with this. And so they probably played blind and they didn't want to stir the pot and get the contractor all, uh, you know, upset about digging further. They put all of the burden of proof and monitoring on the contractor. The contractor says, I'll do it. But if WashDOT doesn't follow through with it, we don't know what the contractor's vaccination status was in regards to the staff working on that project. What we do know is that Roger Millar is saying to the world, what's he saying to the world? Yeah, we hired a contractor to do that work because they were able to declare that their employees were vaccinated. So all I got to say, folks, is we've got to keep digging and we've got to see past this mind trickery that WashDOT, especially Millar, is pushing on the legislature and pushing on the people is that he's not telling the whole truth. Let's be fair. Let's be fair. The contractor might very well have had 100% vaccinated staff, but let's flip the coin. He could have also used 100% unvaccinated staff and contractors that were granted accommodations. And that is just as much the truth as having 100% vaccinated staff could be the truth. So folks, this is going to our legal representation and we're gonna make sure that this gets circulation because we need to be told what the whole truth is. The truth is this, and I'll summarize it and end with this. WashDOT did not offer accommodations to its unvaccinated staff and fired them. But it is more than happy to take a contractor like BKC contractor uh, contracting and allow them to give their staff accommodations that WashDOT deemed were inappropriate and not acceptable for its own staff. Okay, there you have it. 
I will actually make these documents available for download in a, uh, in a description, a link in the description below. I'll also provide a link to this document right here, this uh, newspaper article. And uh, so there you have it, folks. Life's getting busy. I'm not able to pop videos on as often as I was, but when stuff like this comes up, I want to get it up there. All right. Thanks for your attention. Y'all have a good day.